not here yet? Is that what we're saying? But you can still give your money. We'll still take your money. Don't worry about that. So we'll, we'll get that. All right? Uh, it's good to see everybody, and I hope that you made it through the holidays great. We had a fantastic one. And the new year, we're looking forward to it. And uh, what God has in store for us here in our church, it's going to be awesome. And what, what God's going to do. So let's open with a word of prayer this morning. <laughs> Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for the beautiful sunshine, Father, for the beautiful day that you blessed us with to come to your house to worship you, for the beautiful sanctuary and for your presence, Father. Lord, we pray that you would just take full control of this service. Lord, we know that we've got sort of an order of service in our bulletin, but it's all about you. It's up to you. We, we pray for your leadership and for your guidance. We pray for your Holy Spirit to come and take full control of all that we do and all that we are. That your word will be proclaimed in music and testimony and baptism and through the spoken word this morning. Father, that somebody here that doesn't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, that today would be the day they would give their heart and their soul and their whole life to him before it's too late. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. At this time, then, instead of having the offering, we're going to have a bad couple of baptisms this morning. So that's to come. It's really the, I think, the epitome of what baptism really is about. And it's found in Romans chapter 6, beginning in verse 3. And God's word says, Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Here, think about that, what that means, into his death. So we, are, we associate with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And just as he died on the cross and he went into the ground but he rose from the dead amen and uh we do that we see that picture here uh through the water we don't have to die physically unless i decide to hold you under a little longer he's kicking a stream at this but uh i've just been teasing him. john uh, this is john by the way so john the baptist john the one who will be baptized today his name shall be john some of you know john he had been here uh, coming a while back, and now he's kind of back. He's uh, uh, made a dedication of his life. He wants to be part of this body. Amen. Amen. He wants to be baptized today. So we're doing that, and I'm, and I'm going to introduce John more in just a second. But the scripture goes on to say, so we've been baptized into his death, and therefore we've been buried with him through baptism into death, in order that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so too we might walk in the newness of that life. Amen? That's a really, really good piece of scripture. And uh, I want to introduce for those of you that don't know, this is John uh, Luster, L-U-S-T-E-R, uh, John Luster. And uh, John, like I said, he was here uh, a while ago, and then he was kind of gone, he's been back, and he wants to be part of this church. And, uh, and uh, we actually were supposed to have two bath baptisms today. Uh, John's sister with the girl who came last Sunday gave her life to Jesus. She's sick today. Oh. But, you know what? There's a praise in even that. We'll have a baptism next Sunday. Amen? Amen. So you be in prayer for her, Melissa, so that she can be here next week and be baptized. And uh, so we're going to baptize her uh, this today with us, John. So, uh, John, come on up. Uh, walk on in. She's up. He said it's warm, so. <laughs> there is an old story about the Baptist that there was a guy who came and it gave his life to Jesus and and he was known for telling lies. And uh, he, they baptized him in the creek, and it was January. And the preacher said, how's the water? He goes, oh, it's okay. And then Howard says, baptize him again. He's still a liar. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, but we know he's John's not, John's not that guy. And John said the water's fine, right? So, anyway, that just came to my mind. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know why, where this stuff comes from. And this is to put over your nose if you want it. If you want it. So, uh, John, 
I've known you for a couple of years now, and I know you've asked the Lord into your life. Then you understand what the baptism is about. It's not for salvation. That's already come in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you asked him into your heart, which you've already done. But the baptism is a symbol of what's occurred right in here, inside of him. And uh, you're associating with the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Uh, as a byproduct of that is church membership, if you desire it, to be a part of this church, which he does. Um, so all that's good. Amen. So I just need to ask you if, that you can confirm with everyone here. Have you asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior? And is there anything you'd like to share with the church? I won't give you too many times to preach, but you can share. <laughs> anything you want, you don't want to share? Anything? Okay. Well, based upon your profession of faith, in accordance to the divine command, I now baptize you, my brother, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with him in death. Amen. And risen, you may walk in you. church to reach out to John and uh, get him involved in all the stuff that we do around here. And uh, praise the Lord. Amen. So at this time we're going to have the offering. So Dale, come on up. Um, I told Dale to announce it, but since I'm already talking, the, the envelopes uh, Greg mentioned, there are some. Chuck put some around. So just put your uh, tither. And if you're a guest today, fill out that card if you would and drop it in the plate. Uh, so we have a record of that if you don't mind. And, uh, with that, start off the new year, I'm, I'm going to be reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, starting with verse 6, or I'm sorry, verse 7. Each one of you must do as he's proposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves the cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound in you, so that always having sufficient in everything you have in abundance in every good deed. He that supplies the seed for the sower, the bread for food, will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You bow with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, as we start this new year, Father, let us start off as being a cheerful giver. Father, we ask and pray that you bless the gift, bless the giver. Father, let this church be the place of hope and healing for salvation in this community. For these things we ask in thy Savior Jesus, and it's in his name we pray. Amen. <laughs> Stand with us, and we're going to sing a song here. We're going to go down to the river. Let's all go down to the river.
Audrey's uh, at church with her niece today up in Ohio. Morning, morning, morning.
Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I put you guys on the calendar. You're here every Thursday from 10 to 1 or 10 to 12? 10 till Friday? <laughs> so something like that. So if, if you're a lady or a man, uh, they're open, and if you'd like to sew, stitch, crochet, or would like to learn, they're willing to teach, right? And they make all kinds of things. And they made this quilt. And this is for a lady who's been struggling. And uh, the lady's son is here today, and uh, he's not going to, he doesn't know that, but uh, he's going to take this quilt home and give it to his mama. Ron, this is for your mama. Her name is Carol Jackson, yep. uh, but we're going to pray over it. But you can come up and hold it, okay? and we're going to pray over it. So this is for your mama, okay? And uh, pray for his mama. She's just been struggling with just different stuff, and she may have to. The assisted living or wherever they're talk, talking about decisions and all that that have to be made. And this is to help her and, and, and uh, where she's at in her life and just some decisions and everything else. So we're going to have a word of prayer over this too. Father God, we're thankful for Miss Jackson, for Carol Jackson, Lord. We lift her up today. And I just pray, Lord God, that you would continue to hold her and direct her and guide her and keep her, Lord God, and love on her. And Lord, let this uh, quilt just be a reminder of your perfect love, Lord God. Above all things, above any decisions that have to be made or anything where she's going to be taken care of or living arrangements, God, you've got her in your hands. And Lord God, you are, uh, you are the one, Lord God. So we call upon you and ask you just to love on her and remind her how precious she is. And may this quilt, Lord God, do just that in, in helping her to remember the great love that you have for her. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 While we're on the topic of the quilts, I just wanted to uh, report to you that I took the quilts you all gave me uh, from the ladies in the church to my brother Gerald and his wife Dorothy Stevenson uh, down at Provident Pavilion and if you see pictures on Facebook about it or on YouTube about it, they were uh, thrilled to get them, and uh, I really do appreciate it, and so did they. And don't forget, not this week, but next week is the Ladies' Bible Study with Miss June Guyman Stevenson on the uh, first Tuesday and, and Wednesday of the, uh, the second t Tuesday and Wednesday of the month uh, here at the church. And uh, uh, just to remind the ladies that that will be the, the experiencing God with Henry Blackaby study. All right. 
Good morning, Mr. Manny. On that same line, I uh, got to spend New Year's Eve with my cousin that I had to quilt for a before. She's got breast cancer, and when I gave it to her, she was just broke down. And she said, but thank you all so, so much. She's a Christian, and she's leaving everything in God's hands. So she's going to be fine. She has a lot better than me, obviously. All right. So, Mary Ann, you're having your other eye done tomorrow morning? Yes. And, uh, and then Daryl Spalding, uh, which maybe he told me before, but I forgot. But somebody told me that we're, hey, he's having surgery, shoulder surgery, uh, shoulder replacement. Uh, this is like number nine. So <laughs> <laughs> you know the little joke I made about I broke my shoulder in two places? Well, don't go to them two places. Uh, that's where it's yeah, going to be. But anyway, he's, uh, so Darryl, but remember Daryl tomorrow. Uh, He's going to be he's having an early surgery at uh, St. E. Florence, uh, 8 a.m. or so, 7.30 or 8, uh, shoulder surgery. So uh, as you pray, remember those two. Is there anyone else having a surgery or something this week? If anyone ever wants to be prayed over or something, we will anoint you to pray over you as you want. So if you desire that, just call us and come on up and we'll pray over you every time. Including you guys today, if you want. If you do, even later on in the service, just let me know. We'll pray over you. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's have a word prayer this morning. One, one way to start out the new year. In your house. And with the matches and the job. Yes, Lord, Amen. Thank you for this decision. And we just continue to pray that uh, for him and for his sister, so that his sister can be here next week to go through the message of water. And we just ask you to be with uh, Greg and Benny's family today, Lord, as they, uh, as they go to a, uh, a, a funeral for a, a loved one, Lord. We just ask you to bless upon them. And all those who are having surgeries, Lord, we just uh, pray that uh, each one has a successful surgery and that uh, everything goes good. And I know Tim is having a test tomorrow on MRI, Lord, we just pray that all that goes well. And we just pray a blessing upon our service as we continue. In your name we pray. Amen. All the news. All of you can come up front. <laughs> Not in me. That was you. That was you. I'm the only one here, guys. Today we're going to talk about new things because everybody's talking about new stuff because it's January. So tell me something that you think of when you think of new stuff. What might be something new? New pants. Okay. What else is new? You might have a new what? Shoes. You might have new shoes. You might have new what? Um, you might have new shoes. Shirt. Might have a new shirt. Might have new. Oh, you might have new. Um, yeah, you might. You might have a new hairdo. Might have new friends. You might have new friends. You might have new. A new house. You might. You might have new teeth. <laughs> Because here she's going to have some new teeth. So there's a lot. What else might you have? You might have a New Year's resolution. Right. You might have a New Year's promise or resolution. Well, in the Bible, Jesus told a lot of stories that were like earthly stories about <laughs> earthly things that help people understand heavenly things because they couldn't really understand heavenly things. So one of the stories that Jesus told 
in the Bible was about, somebody said it, I think it was Peyton, about a new house. So he told this story about a man that wanted to build a new house. Now this man was a very wise man, and so when he went out to build his house, he found him a place that was flat and rocky. I mean, it was really hard rock surface. And so he took some wood and he began to build his house. And he built walls and he built windows and he had to put a roof on it. And, and he had to put a door in it. The windows. And he had to put all those things on it and he began to build. He had to have hammer and nail. And he began to build his house. And when he got it all finished, he moved into the house. So when he got it all finished, he moved into the house. Now, when he moved in, after he got there, a big storm came about. And the wind began to blow, 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 wind, wind, wind. I got to have lots of wind. The wind began to blow, it blew, and it shook the house. And then the rain came down. Let's hear some rain. The rain came down. The rain came down. And then the waters came up and the waters came up. But he was a wise man and he chose that hard, solid ground rock to build his house on. And guess what? The house shook, but it did not move. It stayed right there. So that man was safe, wasn't he? So that was the wise man. And Jesus said, the wise man who built his house is just like a person who trusts me and then, you know what they do? They not just believe in me, but they actually obey me. And that's like a wise man who built his house on something that was solid rock. Well, guess what? He told him about a foolish man who did something a little different, but he wanted a new house too. So the foolish man, he got all his stuff together and he found a place to build his house, but guess what? He built his house on this ground that was made out of sand and it was all shifty. It wasn't very good, but you know what? He thought, I like this place though. This is where I'm gonna build my house. And I, I like the sand and I like where it is. And so I'm gonna build my house here. So he got all his hammer and his nails and everything, put his roof on and he built his house. And when he built his house, the storm came again. He moved in, there's the storm blowing. And the rain came down and the rain came down. And the floods came up and the floods came up. And guess what? His house flat. I mean flatter than a flitter. Because he did not build his house on, on something, hard. something strong. And he said, this foolish man is like somebody that says they believe in me, but they don't obey me. I, they don't have a hard surface. They really don't believe in me. So really, what we have to learn from that is, if our life is built on Jesus, we're going to stand no matter what happens. And this is such a neat time to have this story, and I'll tell you why. <coughs> because we just saw something new that happened. John that was baptized, you know what he has new? He has a new life in Jesus. And there isn't anything better than you can have than that, is there? And that's like that man who built his house on a strong surface. Having your life built on Jesus is what gets you through everything. And here's what we're going to do. I think celebrating a new life is more important than celebrating a new year. And I didn't get to celebrate anything. So we're going to go out. When they sing Jesus Loves Me, we're going to blow our horns. And we're going to celebrate a new life in Jesus. Because I think that's important. That's important to celebrate. You have to blow really hard on it. Who didn't get one? Joel. Wait, we're not doing it yet. Joel. Joel, would you hand that to Sam back there, please? Thank you. Everybody get one. Who didn't get one? Who didn't get one? Here, yeah, but that's okay. You here, Chastity, you can take that together. Now, Honor, wait, not yet, not yet. 
On our way out, we're going to celebrate a new life in Jesus, okay? Because that is worth celebrating. But let's have a little prayer first, okay? Dear God, we thank you so much for a new year, but we thank you even more for what Jesus did for us to give us a new life. So we're going to celebrate big time because we thank you for this wonderful, wonderful thing that you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, get up and blow. Celebrate. <laughs> if I know why the